things are about to get real interesting between the RTA and NASCAR when it comes to charter negotiations. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt, and on Tuesday morning, the athletic writers Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi posted an article about the ongoing charter negotiations between the Race Team Alliance, the RTA, as well as NASCAR. And things aren't looking very great, for being completely honest with you out here. They're looking better than maybe the future of the Carolina Panthers, but outside of that, they're not looking too hot whatsoever. So the biggest sticking point here between the RTA and NASCAR currently is the fact that the owners, the RTA, want to to make charters permanent. NASCAR and Jim France say that is an absolute non-starter. They're not even going to consider doing that. And now the teams have been like, no, we're going to push back against this. And they've been negotiating since 2022 at this point. If you're looking at a calendar, it's 2024. It's May of 2024, almost. One day to go until the month of May. And you can get that Justin Timberlake meme out of your system finally. But for the negotiations, that's not too great whatsoever. So now the teams are negotiating with NASCAR, and they know that charters are unlikely not going to be permanent. Jim France has conceded that he's willing to extend the charters through a seven-year period, essentially the length of the next TV contract. And that might be acceptable for some teams, might be acceptable, not acceptable for other teams. So right now they have the negotiating council within the RTA. It's four teams that will go negotiate with NASCAR. NASCAR has simply refused to meet with the negotiating council. In fact, they even turned down an opportunity to meet with teams as they did Tona 500. Jim France did at least. Jim France, meanwhile, is wanting to take a good old-fashioned union-busting approach. Divide and conquer. Start negotiating with teams one-on-one. He's no longer going to meet with the RTA, the negotiating council, anything like that. He only wants to meet with teams on a team-by-team basis, which we had heard about previously. But it seems to be working. So some smaller teams have already met with Jim France. They haven't signed anything yet. But the general consensus is that if a smaller team signs with NASCAR and gets a pretty sweet deal out of it, that could create this rush where everybody's then trying to sign. And the last person standing likely isn't going to get a very good deal because NASCAR does not have to negotiate with the teams and give them all the same number. They could, you know, give a smaller team, a Spire or somebody else a much larger portion of maybe TV money than what they would give somebody else that holds out. That's not going to sit over well. So some of the teams that have already negotiated with or spoken with Jim France on a team-by-team basis told The Athletic, who spoke to over half of the charter teams, that they feel like Jim France and NASCAR are about to present teams with a take-it-or-leave-it type of offer. I don't know if that bluff is going to work. I don't know if they're, if teams are going to call his bluff, rather. And I think that the bigger teams will, and I think they're going to continue to hold out. But if smaller teams start signing and breaking away from the RTA right now, that could put things into a really precarious situation. Curtis Polk from 2311 Racing spoke openly to The Athletic, and he said a lot of interesting things, and I think things that we already knew. Kind of maybe the most interesting part of this is the fact that 2311 Racing and their representatives have not spoken with Jim France since July of 2023. We're approaching a year that they've been radio silence, which isn't great for negotiations. But Curtis Polk and Michael Jordan come from a completely different world, right? They come from the NBA world, where the franchising model is a lot different. You know, the teams have a rev share program, and then they elect a commissioner to represent them. So Adam Silver is paid by all of the teams. He represents their best interest, tries to get them the best, you know, media rights deal, the best sponsorship deals, everything that goes into that. And then the teams, of course, have a rev share. In NASCAR, it's completely different. It, the franchise model is a franchise model basically in name only. It's like franchising a McDonald's or a Subway. Yeah, you own it, but you still have to adhere to the certain rules of you know the overbearing parent company. And they don't really work for you. You essentially work for them. Curtis Polk basically said it's like owning an apartment, but you have no say in anything that goes along, but your dues are still you know due. It's, uh, you know... a a decent comparison and they want to change that but obviously that's not going to change anytime soon they need to get through this negotiating period to begin with so of course the biggest holdup is the charters and teams wanting more money from that revenue split nascar doesn't want to give up more money than already they have they've offered teams 42 percent and nascar calculates it at between 35 and 37 percent is what teams currently get from the tv revenue teams say we get 25 percent uh nascar is including the purse winnings out of that which comes from some of the track money so that's how they get that number that they have teams are basically just sticking with the number that is given to them um out of this revenue split 
So teams want 50%. NASCAR says we'll give you up to 42%. So it's an increase. Definitely an increase. Doesn't seem to be working, though. And teams are not budging on this. So one possible scenario that could play out, and Curtis Polk kind of alluded to this and spoke to it, spoke on it to The Athletic, is what if some of the smaller teams sign with NASCAR? Their charter deal is in place. They're going to remain with NASCAR. But what if some of the bigger teams hold out and their charters are revoked at the end of the year because they haven't signed on? So December 31st, NASCAR yanks their charters. They're no longer charter teams. What does that mean for 2025? Well, essentially, he said that it means that they would likely only show up to races where they can turn a profit. Gone would be, you know, races on the West Coast. He cited the Bush Clash this year as a race that every team lost money on going out there and coming back um, from it. So he said, essentially, you would just see teams show up to races where they know they could make some money or at least break even. He said maybe it'd be 18 races or somewhere in that ballpark, but it wouldn't be a full 36 race schedule that they currently do. And now fans aren't going to be happy about that, and uh, rightfully so. But if they're not chartered and they're not making the money, why would they continue to go out there and race? So the biggest question is, will there be a IndyCar style split here? Obviously, open wheel racing was the most popular form of motorsport in the 80s, 90s, early 90s until the split happened. And then NASCAR absolutely ate their lunch and became one of the biggest sports in the country. No. They're not going to have any sort of split. And the athletic referenced exactly what everybody you know already knew. And that's that ISC and SMI own majority of the tracks. So the two of those companies are in bed together, essentially. NASCAR will only race at or NASCAR races at a lot of I or SMI tracks. SMI makes all their money off of NASCAR, so they're not going to turn their back on the hand that feeds them to go off with this other series. They could, in theory, they absolutely could, but then they could lose the business of NASCAR. So it doesn't sound like that would happen if there was like a rival series to NASCAR. A couple of the other things that were discussed were things like a cost cap, which some teams seem to be in favor of, and some teams maybe don't care as much. I don't necessarily love the idea of a cost cap. I love it when it comes to like how much parts should cost or how much money you spend on R&D, stuff like that. But even in NASCAR, we know there's no R&D. I don't love the idea of employees having their salaries capped. I absolutely hate the idea of that. So some teams appear to be on board with it. Some teams were like, eh, who knows? So for now, it appears that there's just going to be a lot of posturing. The race team alliance and the negotiating council will continue to say, you know, things aren't close. NASCAR will continue to say that things are close. Are they actually close? Some teams seem to think that they might be closer than people realize, uh, if, especially if teams concede some of the points to NASCAR. Teams don't want to concede those points to NASCAR. And right now, I would argue that it's maybe the power is in the team's hands at this point still, because if the teams all stick together, if they all walk together and nobody splinters off, they're powerful because without them, NASCAR doesn't have you know, a NASCAR Cup series. But if teams start to splinter off, it is going to be an absolute wild west. There's going to be a lot of hurt feelings out there. And you could see some some alliances and allegiances that have been that will just be broken up because, you know, half of the party went one way and the other half went the other way. But for now, it appears that teams are still somewhat united in this fight to get what they consider a fairer share out of the revenue split, as well as trying to make charters permanent with NASCAR. But Jim France is a guy that's going to stick to his guns. He is absolutely steadfast in the fact that he will not give in to what the teams are demanding. He's running it a lot like his brother did, Bill France Jr. Uh, it's certainly not like Brian France. But he's, a, he's an old school guy, a traditionalist, and it does not seem like he is willing to move. To quote George Bush, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We don't negotiate with unions is essentially what he's saying here. And he's trying to splinter them, divide and conquer. It's business. I don't, I don't have a side in any of this. I completely understand the path that NASCAR is taking here. I completely understand the path that the team's taking here. Ultimately, if nothing gets decided, the fans are the ones that lose out here. I can see both sides of it. I think everybody can see both sides of it. They'll call the teams greedy. They'll call NASCAR greedy. Everybody in this situation has to be greedy because they want to get the best that's for them. At the end of the day, though, they'll eventually come to a deal. I don't see, I don't envision a Daytona 500 where half the teams don't show up or, you know, the following week at Atlanta or when they go out to Vegas or something like that where teams aren't going. No, everybody will figure this out. The charter deal won't be permanent. It will get extended for seven years. Teams will get more money. And whether or not they get a portion of the new business dealings with NASCAR or a bigger say in the sport, that's going to be, you know, up for discussion. But I do think that those two things will eventually get settled. And then the rest of the finer details will have to get ironed out as well. 
with the teams winning a little bit of what they wanted and with NASCAR keeping majority of the power, which they also want as well. So let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.